the Hellfire relies on a combination of targeting precision and warhead design, rather than overwhelming explosive power, to accomplish its mission. It started out as a rather large helicopter-launched anti-tank missile and remains one of the top anti-tank weapons in the world. Over time, new warheads and terminal guidance techniques were added to address additional target types. In addition to heat warheads for tanks, there are blast fragmentation and thermobaric warheads for structures, people hiding in structures or caves, and other soft targets. It is also capable of destroying small boats and inflicting significant damage on larger ships. There is even a version that doesn't use explosives so that it can be employed in areas where collateral damage is unacceptable. Hellfire Development The development of the AGM-114 Hellfire began in 1972 to meet the U.S. Army's need for a helicopter-launched anti-tank missile to combat Soviet armor formations. In 1978, the U.S. Marine Corps made a similar request and joined the Hellfire development program. The missile was initially designated Hellfire, Helleborn, Laser, Fire and Forget Missile. The official name of the U.S. Army was eventually changed to Hellfire. Hellfire's capabilities have increased over time, allowing it to take on a wider range of targets, as well as countermeasures and obscurance, and thereby improving overall mission performance. In the early 1990s, the U.S. Army developed the AGM-114F to counter improved tank defenses. When an anti-tank missile hits these defensive measures, they explode, dispersing the fatal charge intended to breach the tank. The AGM-114F was the first Hellfire missile to include a tandem warhead, consisting of two charges, one to set off the reactive armor and the other to punch through the tank. In the 1990s, the United States developed AGM-114K, the first of the Hellfire Roman II systems. It had significant improvements over earlier models, including increased lethality and improved performance in countermeasure or veiled environments. In the late 2000s, the AGM-114R Romeo Hellfire Roman II was developed to include the numerous mission sets of previous Hellfire versions. The U.S. Army began producing the AGM-114R in 2010. It can be used against soft part or in close targets. The Romeo variant combined the capabilities of all prior Hellfire missile variations. It can be launched from higher altitudes than early versions, and its unique multi-purpose warhead can kill a target with a single shot. The Romeo variant has a range of 8,000 meters, utilizing semi-active laser homing. It weighs 108 lb, has subsonic speed, and its length is 5 4 to 11 inches. The Hellfire Arm Reaper Drone The U.S. Air National Guard Air Force Reserve Command Test Center, or a TC, recently completed a test launch of the new AGM-114R4 Hellfire missile from an MQ-9 Reaper drone. The test of the modified Hellfire missile, which can fly roughly three times as far as previous versions, was carried out as part of the Valiant Shield exercise that took place this summer. During the exercise, the TC led the successful test of the AGM-114R4 and the associated weaponeering software. It also demonstrated the AGM-114R4's ability to double the MQ-9 standoff range, giving the ability to engage threats while maintaining a safe distance out of the threat's ability to counter-strike, which is crucial to survivability in a contested environment. The AGM-114 Hellfire family of missiles includes the Hellfire Roman II and Longbow Hellfire missiles. The missile is a precision strike, semi-active laser, SAL-guided air-to-ground weapon for U.S. Army's AH-64 Apache, OH-58 Kill Warrior, Reapers, U.S. Marine Corps AH-1W Super Cobras, and U.S. Air Force's Predator slash Reaper UES. The AGM-114R, which is designed to replace all other missile variants, has a stated range of up to 8 kilometers which means the modified R-4 missile that was tested could provide Reapers with the capability to strike targets at ranges of around 24 kilometers. It is worth noting that U.S. Air Force has worked on a software tweak that will allow the Reaper to carry eight live AGM-114 Hellfire missiles for the drone's persistent attack role. Apache Hellfire Missiles the Apache's chief function is to take out heavily armored ground targets, such as tanks and bunkers. The Apache's primary weapon, the Hellfire missile. Each missile is a miniature aircraft, complete with its own guidance computer, 
steering control and propulsion system. The payload is a high explosive, copper line charge warhead powerful enough to burn through the heaviest tank armor in existence. The Apache carries the missiles on four firing rails attached to pylons mounted to its wings. There are two pylons on each wing, and each pylon can support four missiles, so the Apache can carry as many as 16 missiles at a time. Before launching, each missile receives instructions directly from the helicopter's computer. When the computer transmits the fire signal, the missile sets off the propellant. Once the burning propellant generates about 500 pounds of force, the missile breaks free of the rail. As the missile speeds up, the force of acceleration triggers the arming mechanism. When the missile makes contact with the target, an impact sensor sets off the warhead. The original Hellfire design uses a laser guidance system to hit its mark. In this system, the Apache gunner aims a high-intensity laser beam at the target. The laser pulses on and off in a particular coded pattern before giving the firing signal. The Apache computer tells the missile's control system the specific pulse pattern of the laser. The missile has a laser seeker on its nose that detects the laser light reflecting off the target. In this way, the missile can see where the target is. The guidance system calculates which way the missile needs to turn in order to head straight for the reflected laser light. To change course, the guidance system moves the missile's flight fins. This is basically the same way an airplane steers. The Hellfire Roman II, used in Apache Longbow helicopters, corrects these flaws. Instead of a laser-seeking system, the missile has a radar seeker. The helicopter's radar locates the target, and the missile zero in on it. Since radio waves aren't obscured by clouds or obstacles, the missile is more likely to find its target. Since it doesn't have to keep the laser focused on the target, the helicopter can fire the missile and immediately find cover. Lombo Hellfire Missile The U.S. Navy literal combat ship will soon be firing deck-launched Hellfire missiles from the ocean into land targets as part of the service's fast-paced development of its surface warfare mission package integrated onto the ship. The Hellfire firing component of the surface warfare mission package, now integrated onto LCS ships, is an attack system known as the Surface to Surface Mission Module or SSMM. For most of its existence, the SSMM was primarily thought of as a counter-drone, aircraft and helicopter weapon able to track and destroy air and surface threats and ocean warfare engagements. Now, not surprisingly given the multi-domain focus of current Pentagon strategy, Navy weapons developers are thinking about firing the SSMM healthy re at land targets. The Navy ship, engineered and upgunned to use speed in its shallow draft to access ports, coastal areas and other high-threat regions less accessible to deeper draft ships. While initially conceived of as a literal platform, the Navy has in more recent years added lethality to the platform with things like the Naval Strike Missile and over-the-horizon, deck-launched offensive strike missile. The concept is to of course leverage the ship's capacity for literal operations such as countermine missions, surveillance or closing combat, while simultaneously help ensure the ship can contribute to major maritime warfare operations on the open ocean and blue water conflict. The land attack mission is well suited to the LCS as it is a ship which can operate close to shore and potentially be in position to attack high-value land targets. A Hellfire missile is known to operate with a general range of about 8 from a helicopter, which means an LCS could get within a 4-mile range of a given land target for attack. The SSMM is fundamental to air and surface defense for the Navy as it has upgunned the LCS such that it can destroy enemy aircraft. Ships were small craft on the move with laser spotting and helicopters. Now, the Navy is building upon this to ensure that the weapon can also support land operations. 